Elias Smert asked whether I could do a video on UTMs to supplement my series on topographic maps. UTM refers to Universal Transverse Mercator Coordinate System, but you don't need to know that to use it. Instead, just think of UTMs as an easy-to-use substitute for longitude and latitude. To understand why you'd use one system instead of the other, you need to understand both. And whichever system you use, be sure to check out part three of this series once it comes out, because that's where I teach you a useful trick and warn you about using the wrong datum. But let's begin at the beginning. This is the view from the high point of a mesa in New Mexico. How do you describe exactly where this point is? For that matter, how do you describe the exact location of any spot on Earth? The original solution, which people still use, is longitude and latitude. By the time I finish describing that coordinate system, you'll appreciate why people came up with UTMs. Here are the long lat values for this spot in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Let's ignore the minutes and seconds for the moment and focus on the basic unit of the system, the degree. And that's how we get to the first confusing thing about the old system. A degree isn't a unit of distance on the Earth's surface like a mile or a kilometer. Instead, it's an angle where the vertex of the angle is at the center of the Earth. That should tell you right away that this coordinate system is going to be trouble. Anyway, a degree is 1 360th of the way around the Earth measured as an angle. So there's a connection between degrees of longitude and latitude and the degrees you use to measure angles in basic math or during construction work. But then there's the minutes and seconds. They're not about time. Instead, they're fractions of a degree. For people used to decimal systems, dividing units into sixtieths doesn't come easy. There are two basic ways to simplify the system. Here's the same location where the degrees and minutes are the same, but the fractions of a minute are expressed decimally instead of using seconds. For some reason, this has become the standard coordinate system for hikes, at least where I live. But that's because we have GPS units that turn the math into pictures and simple instructions. Here's an even simpler version where the degrees are the same, but the finer divisions are expressed as a decimal fraction of a degree. That minus sign in front of the longitude value isn't a typo. A minus sign in front of a longitude value means west, and a minus sign in front of a latitude value means south. But let's go back to the original way of describing this location. What is it north of? What is it west of? The answer, oddly enough, is north and west of this weather buoy in the middle of the ocean. How did that happen? The north-south part of any location makes sense, since latitude represents a measurement north or south of the equator. The east-west part of the location is totally arbitrary. It represents the point where a north-south line drawn through Greenwich, England crosses the equator. Why Greenwich, England? Because the most critical use of longitude and latitude has always been for sea navigation, and for a long time England was the number one maritime power in the world. The two lines cross each other in the Atlantic Ocean, and someone put a weather buoy there, because why not? And that's how you get negative values with decimal degrees. On a graph, any x values left of the origin and any y values below the origin are negative. In the same way, any longitude values west of the zero, zero point and any latitude values south of that point are negative. Anyway, if you're standing at the center of the Earth, the mesa top we're trying to pinpoint is at an angle of roughly 35 degrees north of the equator. Also, the north-south line through the mesa top is roughly 107 degrees west of the north-south line through Greenwich, England. None of us live at the center of the Earth, so how do these angular measurements translate into units we actually use? For latitude, here's the answer. By the way, if you've ever heard the term knot for a ship's speed, one knot is one nautical mile per hour. Sadly, for longitude, those values only work at the equator. As you approach the north or south pole, the lines of longitude converge, and the angular measurements between those lines shrink to zero. In other words, for longitude, the degrees, minutes, and seconds don't translate into fixed distances on the surface of the Earth. If your only goal is to specify the location of a point, the longitude-latitude system is sufficient because it does provide a unique horizontal value for every point on Earth. But what people usually need to understand is the relationship between two points. Let's say they're at point A and their goal is to get to point B. Here I'm using two sets of islands, but the same problem exists on land. Let's also say that they know the longitude and latitude of both points, and they want to know how far apart those two points are and the exact compass bearing from one point to the other. 
As it turns out, calculating that distance and bearing from long lat values is complicated. Unless, of course, you think spherical trigonometry is a piece of cake. The complications of the long lat system are one of the reasons that ocean-going ships always used to have a navigator. These days, electronic gizmos tied to satellites do the heavy lifting for us. But before GPS existed, people needed a simpler way to figure out the relationships between two points. One of the alternatives they came up with is UTMs, and we'll cover that system in the next video. Music